So I want you to go ahead and open up the folder for 0304 reflectance in the work files. And you'll see that there's three materials in there. And the first one is the color gradient. So let's just go ahead and open that color gradient so we can talk a little bit more about it. So the very first thing you're going to notice is that we already have the images loaded here as we talked about. And I've got them set for one and one, and I haven't really changed any of the settings here. And I've actually just sort of clicked and dragged that chip down to here so that we have a duplicate of that exact same image in our reflectance 90. Now, this only becomes an issue when you change the roughness from 100 to anything lower. Because remember the whole having everything go towards white? Well, let's go ahead and see how that actually works out. And in this particular instance, what I'll do is I'll just use the default preview so we can see this pretty quickly and easily. So. We have our purple, and that looks okay, I suppose. We'll start at 100 so you can really see it. So there we go. It's a little bit more saturated now. Now if we go down, and you know what I actually do? I'm going to go ahead and store this. So I'm just going to right context, click on that, and hit store. And what you'll notice here, now we have one of one. Well, that's storing that bit of information. So let's go down to something like, say, oh, let's go down really low, something like 65. And then we'll just go ahead. and. Now you can see we're getting that white stuff again. And if you don't believe me, let's just go ahead and store this one too. And now we can flip back and forth between these two. So we're getting that white stuff and that white stuff doesn't look so good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay on number two here and I'm just going to click and drag this guy down and I'm going to leave everything else exactly the same. And you notice a big difference. See how we keep our color? Well, that's very much the way that it's supposed to be. And just like when you're doing your two color chips on your reflectance zero and reflectance 90. You want to do two images on your reflectance zero and your reflectance 90. The other thing that's worth noting here is that generally speaking, for most images, you do not want to have force Fresnel on. However, because these are basically just solid color images, it's not really going to be a problem for me. If you're using a photograph, you're definitely not going to want to have that on. And it does look somewhat different. You can see the difference here. So that's just a choice that you can make or not make. It's the way I chose to make it here on this particular material. The other thing that's worth noting is that if you don't have Force for now on, what you wanna do is you wanna go in here and you wanna boost up the brightness. And I found that somewhere around 15 is a good boost. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna give a little bit more of a Fresnel curve so that you kinda of make up for the fact that you don't have Force for now turned on. That's just gonna look a little bit nicer and a little bit more natural fall off, especially when you get into low roughnesses, you know, something like say 40 or something around that neck of the woods so that you don't end up with anything that looks too weird. The other thing that you want to take into consideration when you're working on this stuff is you want to make sure that you're using a realistic ND. You don't want your NDs to be way, way high because that's going to throw off your image, especially if you're working with a photograph. So let's go ahead and take a look at some photographs and see how that actually plays out. Here we go. There's a photograph, and you can see this is the photo. This is the map right here. It's one of those NVIDIA free maps. And I, again, have not done anything to it in terms of tiling. But what I have done is I've dragged a copy over here, and notice that I do not have Force Fresnel turned on here. But what I do have is I have the brightness turned up to say 25 on this particular instance. And one of the things you want to watch out for is you just want to make sure that your highlights don't get real blown out. So, you know, you can use your little hovering over and sort of seeing, okay, is anything going to the point where it's completely blown out and we're losing color detail? Because if it is, then that's not going to be any good. But I usually take it right up to the point where that's going to look good. So let's go ahead and I have the ND set for eight here because this is sort of a metallic object even though it's rusty and covered with paint so i have the nd a little higher and the roughness here is set for 85 so let's just go ahead and render that out real quick so you can see that looks pretty good i mean even without any other tweaking just putting those two image maps right there is going to give you a pretty good result in maxwell and this last one is pretty much more of the same oh look at that it's missing its thing there so there we go That's the right map. It just decided that it didn't like the name for some reason. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll save that out so you don't have that problem. 
if you see that, it's going to ask you to replace the map. And what I did is I said yes, and I went and I found the map that it needs to be replaced with. And this is the right map. And again, notice here that I have the brightness up about 25. And on this one, that is starting to skirt up into a place where things are getting blown out, but it doesn't look so bad. And again, the ND is 8 and the roughness is 85. So let's just go ahead and render that. And that looks pretty good. So one of the things that I've done here, and I suppose I should talk about this now, is I've created some custom previews. And I'm going to go ahead and load a custom preview. And I'll give these to you as part of the work files in a folder called previews. And you can search through them to your heart's desire because you begin to see as we work that having custom previews is very useful. But one of the previews I have is actually, and I'll just load that up here, is actually the symbol. And the symbol is something that comes with Maxwell, and it's a really useful little preview scene. So I use it a lot, and what I do is I just go ahead and load it and render, and that's what you're seeing when you saw those initial renders. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to let that render for a little while longer, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that out so you don't have that problem with the missing maps and you can play with these and look at these and tweak these out later on because there's more that we can do with these that'll make them look even better than they look right now.